This law that just passed in Arizona, which I think is a poorly conceived law, you, you know, you can, you can try to make it really tough on people who look like they, quote unquote, might be illegal immigrants. One of the things that the law says is local officials are allowed to ask somebody who they have a suspicion might be a legal immigrant for their papers, but you can imagine if you are a Hispanic American in Arizona, your, your great-grandparents may have been there before uh, Arizona was even a state, but now suddenly if you don't have your papers and you took your kid out to get ice cream, you're going to be harassed. That's something that could potentially happen. I, that's not the right way to go. Martin Cudlis had just celebrated his third birthday. The day he died, he rode his bike by himself for the first time. His father said he loved planes and Clifford the big red dog. He says he would have been starting school about now and wonders what he would have grown up to be. Martin was an only child and was having ice cream with his mother at this Baskin Robbins near Havana and Mississippi on September 4, 2008. A pickup truck crashed into the building and killed him. The two women in the pickup, Patricia Gunthar, and Deborah Sarecki were also killed. Police say they were hit by Francis Hernandez, a Guatemalan-born man who was here illegally. He didn't have a valid driver's license, used two different names, and had been arrested more than a dozen times before, yet managed to stay off immigration's radar. The incident sparked debate over immigration reform. Police say he was driving more than 70 miles an hour in a 40-mile-per-hour zone when he crashed into the pickup truck, which in turn crashed into the Baskin Robbins. To see that the other night just destroyed me. What the ex firefighter saw was a three year old boy draw his last breath. I just want the community to know, the parents to know that he didn't die alone. Seconds after a driver plowed into Deborah Sarecki, her friend Patricia Gunthorpe, and little Martin Kudlis, Stokes, who works nearby, rushed to the boy's side to try to save him. I asked the uh, little boy to squeeze my hand to let me know he was all right. He had no look of pain on his face. He was just like in a state of shock. He squeezed my hand, and as soon as the paramedics rolled up and opened the doors, his head just fell over to the side. The pain that racked Vito Cudlis from his son's death could be felt by nearly everyone in the small cemetery chapel Wednesday morning, strong enough to make the 150 mourners cry and even moan out loud. The distraught father wailed beside the open casket of three-year-old Martin, shaking his head back and forth while staring at the body. Vito rose to his feet, hesitated, then bent over to touch and kiss his son again. He fluffed the pure white blanket without thinking before leaning on his wife, Ainley, for support. Martin, Martin, he wailed. I miss you. I love you so much. As the staff of the Fairmount Cemetery Chapel began to close the coffin, Vito waved them off. 
he needed to kiss his son one more time and touch his cheek and forehead. He straightened the blanket again and again. It was the last time he would ever see his son. One of three people who died, September 4, when a vehicle crashed into an Aurora ice cream shop after a collision. Slowly, the coffin lid was closed. Vito leaned on his hands, against the top, sobbing. Speechless, Enli, in a dark shawl and dark glasses, moved next to him, warmly placing her arm around him. The two stood there sobbing, as mourners watched. During the service, Eddie said he could see Martin, chasing his grandmother, around heaven. Little guy, little monster, we will miss you, every day. No one could give better hugs, he said. Each family member threw several fistfuls of dirt on the coffin before the grounds crew began shoveling. At the end, Vito, exhausted and disheveled, looked around at the crowd. I have no words, he said, squinting in the sunlight. I am depressed out of my mind. Hopefully, none of us will ever have to go through something like this again. Ever. On February 23. 2010, an Arapaho County jury found Hernandez guilty on 18 criminal charges, including vehicular homicide, leaving the scene of an accident involving death and child abuse, resulting in death. At Hernandez's sentencing in April, Martin's father, Murat Cudlis, said, We miss Martin very much. My wife is pregnant with a little girl, and she will never know her big brother. Judge John Wheeler sentenced Hernandez to 60 years in prison 